Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with each one of you as we enter into the divine liturgy, the Eucharistic mystery, trusting in the Lord who loves us. Let us ask that Lord for forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, I have done for what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and even my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us together to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father of peace, we are joyful in your word, your Son, Jesus Christ, who reconciles us to you. Let us hasten toward Easter with the eagerness of faith and love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princesses of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land had retrieved its lost Sabbaths during all that time it lies waste, it shall have rest with, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to, to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his, his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ is the stronghold of my life, before whom should I shrink? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast, for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. 
For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light has come into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. We rejoice because, by the mysterious grace of God, we're walking in God's light. It's so easy to prefer darkness to the light. Even Nicodemus came to Jesus at night so people wouldn't know what he was up to. So often it's easy for us to hide our faith and hide our belief. And also to hide the questions we have about God. And God wants us to have wholesome, lively, honest questions about the faith. This is so important for us so that we can be like Nicodemus and actually get the answers. But when we're not even asking the questions, should we be surprised we're not getting the answers? What is it that comes between us and the light of God? In every person's case, it's different. Sometimes it's the sheer misery and sorrow of life that some people are born into. Some people are born into financial, emotional, and physical squalor. And it's hard for them to see the light and love of God. For other people, everything externally seems okay, but inside they're all confused and messed up. They go from one thought to the next. They can't focus their intelligence or their spirit. They go from one pleasure to the next, always being dissatisfied with what they've received. Other people can't see the light because they see too clearly the suffering of humanity around the world, the injustice of war, the terrible situations that humanity has always been in. What is it that's causing the light of God not to shine clearly in our hearts and our minds? It's different in every person's case, but it's important for every person to realize the light of God is there for each of us. Now, primitive peoples, when they would first see a solar eclipse, when the moon would come between the sun and the earth, darkness would come at high noon, and they would panic. They would say, the sun is dying. The sun no longer exists. The world is coming to an end. Well, contemporary humanity has many things that have come between us and God, casting a darkness on the world, and people say, well, God is dead or God doesn't exist in the first place. I'll just live in the moment and not think about the future or care about the past. But each of us as believers, as followers of the carpenter's son from Nazareth, look at things a different way. Yes, we see the darkness. We're realists. We know the temptations. We know our own weaknesses. But we know something else, that there's a living, loving God beyond whatever it is that has come between us and God. We, as disciples of the Lord within Catholicism, understand that we have to constantly reform our hearts, our minds, our own imaginations, so that we'll be able to sense God in the moment. We live in the moment in a special way. We appreciate the past for all that's gone before, both sinful and glorious. And we try to figure out the present. We try to forgive the sins that have been committed against us, and we seek forgiveness for the sins that we have committed against others. And we look for a future 
that will be filled with hope and love. Uh, when I was pastor down at Sebring for a few short years, I asked uh, the teenagers in the parish, just a casual question, I said, where do you see yourself when you become 35? And each had a different story. One would say, nice house, married, a good job, etc. Uh, one young fellow said, I want to be retired. <laughs> Well, yes, that's an ambitious thing. But where do we want to be a decade from now, a day from now, an hour from now, in our relationship with God? Because that's the only thing that ultimately matters. If our relationship with God is right, then we'll be able to figure out all the tumultuous human relationships that we have with our own family, our own friends, our employers, our employees. If our relationship with God is right, life could be stormy and tough and difficult, but we'll have a resource that is greater than those storms of life. And when our life finally ends, having practiced seeing the face of God wherever we look in this world, we'll be ready to see the face of God in the next. Now, one of the books that we published at Staten Island and an audio program that we have produced here is by a high school teacher from New York. And he knows that even though he teaches in a Catholic high school, a lot of his students don't believe in God, have doubts about God. And he wrote a book, Finding Faith in a Godless World. And that's the key to a godly, dignified, courageous life. Every one of us, when we were children, knew we were going to be heroes of our lives. We wouldn't be ordinary. But somehow society tries to say, be like everybody else. Don't buck the system. Just go along and get along. But from the perspective of Christ, all of us can be heroes in his kingdom. Great people of virtue. To do what's right even when we could do what's wrong. To care for those who would never care for us. To forgive those who would never even ask our forgiveness. If we're that type of person, we become ourselves a living message to the world that God is alive in the midst of all this chaos. And such a life is a life worth living. Let us stand now and pray together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one being the Father, through whom all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious power, he suffered, died, and spared. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray together now for our needs and the needs of all God's holy people. For the church, may we be unafraid to proclaim Christ crucified to those who search for meaning and purpose in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lead and guide us in government, may they work together to bring justice to the oppressed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, 
May all be anointed by God to live in peace and equality, filled with justice and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for baptism, may they hear in today's gospel a word that saves and promises hope, even in moments of doubt and despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray this Mass, let us remember Mr. Vincini. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear all of our prayers, those spoken and those others unspoken in our hearts. Answer them all in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, who lives and reigns gently with you, one God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of many human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice and all the sacrifices of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the church. Lord, we offer you these gifts which bring us peace and joy. Increase our reverence by this Eucharist and bring salvation to the world we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He came among us as a man to lead mankind from darkness into the light of faith. Through Adam's fall, we were born as slaves of sin, but now through baptism in Christ, we are reborn as your adopted children. Earth unites with heaven to sing the new song of creation as we adore and praise you forever.
Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you, Father, and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Paul, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love, your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Benedict, our Bishop George, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through who him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray together in the powerful way that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Father, you enlighten all who come into the world. Fill our hearts with the light of your gospel that our thoughts may please you and our love be sincere. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Father, look with love upon your people. The love which the Lord Jesus Christ showed us as he delivered himself to evil men and suffered the agony on the cross. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.